brings us to what is perhaps the most famous passage in the, in the letter of James, and that is his statement about the relationship between faith and works and his declaration that faith without works is dead. So let's look at what James has to say about these things, and also as we're reading it, ask ourselves, how do we reconcile this with St. Paul's teaching in Romans chapter 3 and Galatians 2 on justification by faith apart from works of the law? And so we'll try to uh, see how those go together here. James chapter 2, verse 14 to 18, it's a short passage, but here's what it says. What does it profit, my brethren, if a man says he has faith but has not works? Can his faith save him? If a brother or sister is ill-clad in lack of daily food, and one of you says to them, Go in peace, be warmed and filled, without giving them the things needed for the body, what does it profit? So faith by itself, if it has no works, is dead. But someone will say, You have faith, and I have works. Show me your faith apart from your works, and I, by my works, will show you my faith. Although the lectionary doesn't give it, I'm just going to go on down. If you keep reading, there are two more verses that are important. Verse 19, where James says, You believe that God is one, you do well. Even the demons believe and shudder. And then also, he goes on to give some examples of faith and works together from figures like Abraham. And then he says this important word in chapter 2, verse 24. You see that a man is justified by works and not by faith alone. It's kind of the climax of his teaching. So let's just uh, go through this in just a minute. Um, Take a few minutes. Okay. First thing we need to realize is in order to understand the passage, we want to define our terms. So when James is talking about faith, what does he mean? The Greek word here, faith, pistis, has a number of different connotations, multiple meanings. Um, It can mean to believe in something, right? It can also mean to trust someone. It has both of those dimensions of meaning. In this context, James seems to be using pistis, faith, primarily with regard to the intellectual assent or belief in something as true. You can see that in the verse that the lectionary left out, but which I read, you believe, pistuo, that God is one, you do well, even the demons believe and shudder. In other words, for James, the kind of faith he's talking about here is the faith that the demons have. They believe that God is one. They know that's true. They intellectually assent to it, but they still shudder at the prospect of judgment that God will enact upon them for their wicked actions. So the belief that he's talking about with the demons is not trust. The demons might believe in God, but they don't trust God, and they don't follow the commandments of God, obviously, right? So it's a little more focused on intellectual assent to something as true, okay? Is what he means by faith. Works in this context clearly have to do with works of charity or good deed towards one's neighbor. You can see this by verses 15. After James says, if a man has faith but does not have works, can his faith save him? And the obvious implied answer to that question is no. No, it can't. The example he gives is of a brother or sister, that means a fellow Christian, who's ill-clad and in lack of daily food, and if you say to them, go in peace and be warmed and filled, but you don't do anything to give them what is needed, you've not performed a work, a good work. So he's saying here that the faith, the belief in Christ, the belief in God, has to be accompanied by good works like giving clothing to a brother or sister who needs clothing, or giving food and drink to a brother or sister who is thirsty or who is hungry. So you already can, just from that very basic definition, you can begin to see the difference between James's statement about faith and works and, say, St. Paul's statement about faith and works. So when James will talk about a man is justified by works and not by faith alone, the works that James is referring to in context, for example, have nothing to do with circumcision, right? Whereas if you look at St. Paul's teaching in Galatians chapter 2, he's clearly talking about being justified apart from works of the law, meaning being made righteous, being declared righteous, being justified, without engaging in the work of circumcision and everything that comes with that. So similar phraseology, but the context is different, and the context determines the meaning here in ways that are important to keep in mind. Different, there's a distinction there. Uh, Paul and James are addressing two distinct situations. Paul is writing to people who think that 
the work of circumcision is necessary for justification or for salvation. And Paul's saying, no, faith is all you need. Faith apart from works of the law is sufficient for justification. Whereas James is talking about people who think believing in Christ is enough that the, and they don't have to do anything. They don't have to be a doer of the word. They can just hear it and believe it and that that's sufficient for justification. That's sufficient for salvation. It doesn't matter how they treat their neighbor or someone who's poor or hungry. And James says, no, belief alone, faith alone is not enough to save. A person is justified by works and not by faith alone. So it's not enough for you to say, I believe in Jesus, but to treat the poor, especially the poor who are members of the church, um, poorly and not to care for their needs. In other words, to refuse to engage in acts of charity. So the context here then, to sum it up, is that James is saying, what does it profit my brethren if a man says he has faith, that is belief, but he doesn't have works, that is works of charity? Can his faith save him? No. And the reason why is because James 2.24, a man is justified by works and not by faith alone. So you don't have to take my word for this interpretation, though. We can actually look at the tr living tradition of the church to back it up. It's very important here that the question of the relationship in, between faith and works isn't just a modern question. It's not even just a question going back to the Protestant Reformation, 16th century. It's a question that goes back to the early church fathers because people recognized, hey, Paul and James seem to be saying something, that, at least at first glance, appears to be maybe contradictory, at least in tension with one another. How do we understand it? And so great figures like St. Augustine of Hippo uh, wrote write, writings on this topic, and Augustine's classic treatise is called On Faith and Works. And I'd like to read to you a passage from it, as well as from um, St. Bede, the Venerable, on this particular text of James and let you hear how the church fathers interpreted the relationship between faith and works. This is what St. Augustine said. Oh, and before I, I, I mention this, let me just make this preliminary point. Um, if you've heard the expression faith alone, you probably heard it on the lips of someone who's inheriting a traditional way of understanding it from Martin Luther, right? Who had the motto of justification sola fide, right? justification through faith alone. He even added that word to Romans chapter 3 when Paul talks about justification. I deal with that in one of my other videos. And so in the tradition flowing from you, Luther, many people when they talk about justification by sola fide, justification by faith alone, what they mean is all that matters or all that's necessary for salvation is faith and it doesn't matter what you do your works can never cause you to lose your salvation. They're not determinative for salvation. Faith alone is all that's necessary. And um, of course, this is clearly at odds with what James says in James chapter two that we just read, which is one of the reasons why um, James was a famously described by Luther as an epistle of straw, right? That was worthy of the fire, of the furnace, of being thrown into the oven, because in Luther's theology, James's emphasis on works as necessary and faith alone as being insufficient would not job with Luther's own theology of salvation, right? So he actually denigrated James to a kind of deuterocanonical status, a secondary status as one of the books of the Bible that he did not think of as equally authoritative and equally inspired with, say, the writings of St. Paul, for example. All right, so with that Lutheran or uh, Martin Luther's understanding of sola fide, a very pro widespread Protestant understanding of sola fide in mind, look at what Augustine says. Because Augustine was a crucial figure for Martin Luther. Luther was an Augustinian monk, and yet on this point, he does not follow Augustine in Augustine's interpretation of James. This is what Augustine says, quote, In the first place, we feel that we should advise the faithful that they would endanger the salvation of their souls if they acted on the false assurance that faith alone is sufficient for salvation, or that they need not perform good works in order to be saved. Pause there. It, it sounds like almost like Augustine is summarizing Luther's position, you know, a thousand years before Luther himself, right? So the people were already making that mistake. They were already interpreting Paul in an incorrect way as saying, all that matters is faith. It doesn't matter what I do. Once I've come to faith in Christ, that's sufficient. My works don't count. Paul, and Augustine calls that a false assurance. He continues. 
This, in fact, is what some had thought even in the time of the apostles. Listen, this is cool. For at that time, there were some who did not understand certain rather obscure passages of St. Paul. When St. Paul says, therefore, that man is justified by faith and not by works of the law, Romans 3, Galatians 2, he does not mean that good works are not necessary or that it is enough to receive and profess the faith and no more. What he means, rather, is what he wants us to understand is that man can be justified by faith even though he has not previously performed any works of the law. For the works of the law are meritorious not before, but after justification. As we said above, this opinion originated at the time of the apostles, and that's why we find some of them, for example, Peter, John, James, and Jude, the Catholic epistles, writing against it in their epistles and asserting very strongly that faith is no good without works. As regards Paul himself, he does not say that any faith in God is good, but he says clearly that faith is good and in conformity with the teaching of the gospel, which results in works of love. And here he quotes Paul, Galatians 5, 6, and faith, he says, that works by charity. Okay, so pause. Let me unpack what Augustine just did there. This is fascinating. What Augustine says is the error, the erroneous idea of a false assurance from a belief in justification by faith alone actually goes back to the time of the apostles. In other, in other words, people were already misinterpreting Paul as meaning all you have to do is believe and it doesn't matter what you do. And that James, the letter of James, as well as some of the other Catholic epistles, were written to correct that false assurance already in the apostolic age. So Augustine would read James not as a correction or contradiction of Paul, but he would read James as a correction of people who are misinterpreting Paul, misinterpreting what Paul meant by justification by faith apart from works of the law. So it's a fascinating reading where Augustine is basically saying the Catholic epistles are a corrective to misinterpretation of Paul's earlier writings. And the misinterpretation that Augustine attributes to these early apostolic figures or figures living in the apostolic period is basically the same position that Martin Luther will take later take up as an erroneous interpretation of Paul based on Galatians 3 and Galatians 2 and Romans 3, the same passages that Augustine singles out as being misinterpreted in the apostolic period. So a uh, really fascinating text. Uh, and it's not just uh, St. Augustine. The, a similar view is taken by Bede, the Venerable, in the 8th century, his commentary on the Catholic epistles, where he writes this about James 2. Quote, Since the Apostle Paul, preaching that man is made righteous by faith without works, was not well understood by those who took his saying to mean that once they had believed in Christ, even though they might commit evils and live wickedly and basely, they could be saved by faith. James explains how the passage of the Apostle Paul ought to be understood to have the same meaning as this letter. All right. So notice B adds a little dimension to it. He points out that some people will say on the basis of Paul's letters, not only am I saved by faith alone, but it doesn't matter what I do after I've come to faith. I can do wicked acts. I can perform acts of sin. I can perform what we would call mortal sins, and there's no way for me to lose my salvation. And sadly, there are Christians to this day who actually hold that view. Um, sometimes you'll hear it described as the doctrine of the absolute assurance of salvation, that once a person believes in Jesus, it doesn't matter what they do after faith and baptism, they can never lose the salvation that was won uh, through faith alone. That's a dangerous, dangerous and pernicious false doctrine, according to St. Bede. And so, again, he argues that James himself wrote against that erroneous idea and that erroneous interpretation of Paul when he uttered the famous lines, faith without works is dead, and perhaps even more striking, that a man is justified by works and not by faith alone.